Hi there, my name is Anne and in this video I'll be making my own DIY paintbrush holder because a couple months ago I made this marker case and I really really love making it and ever since then I've been looking around my room trying to find some things that I could DIY and I looked at my Baymax cup because I really really love my Baymax cup this is my paintbrush holder but it's getting a little bit crowded I have more paintbrushes than this and I can't always find the paintbrush that I'm looking for so I'm gonna DIY it so hopefully there will be some nice shots right here on the screen because to be honest I haven't really figured out every single part of this yet um, the only thing that I know for certain is that I'm gonna make it out of poster tubes that's that's the only thing I know <laughs> I don't really know how I'm gonna attach them yet or how the base plate is gonna look. I will figure it out eventually once I get to that step. I have made some test cuts so that I knew that I could um, cut this with my X-Acto knife. You can obviously do this with other stuff like a handsaw would probably way better than just an X-Acto knife and probably way safer. <laughs> but. I don't really like tools and an exacto knife is what I'm comfortable with so I'm gonna use an exacto knife and if you also want to do this project don't have to do it out of poster tubes you could I don't know use toilet paper rolls but they do really have a visible line on the seam you could do it out of Pringle cans just anything that's round you can do it <laughs> with so I did do some planning and the first thing that I did was organize my paintbrushes and categorize them and try to figure out how many of these tubes I want and how many holders that I want and I have measured the heights of them so that will be the first step is cutting up all the poster tubes. I'm using an exacto knife to cut the poster tubes. I did try using a utility knife but I found that I couldn't cut as straight with it as with the exacto knife but as I mentioned in the intro Using a handsaw or an actual tool for cutting thicker cardboard would probably be smarter. When I was done cutting, I taped the tubes together in a shape that I thought looked nice and filled them up with my brushes to get a preview. This way, I was sure that I would like the holder eventually. Okay, so I finished cutting all my pieces, but as you can see, there are some rough edges on them. And so I'm going to take a sandpaper and sand them down so that they look a little bit more polished and not so rough on the edges. <laughs> the next step is making a base for my paintbrush holder so that, you know, the tubes won't fall over and that they have a bottom to them so that all the brushes don't fall out of it. And I'm going to make it out of this leftover cardboard piece from my marker case. So first I'm gonna position them in the place that I want them to and I'm gonna trace a design onto a piece of paper and I will trace that design onto the cardboard. I decided that the shape of the base would be kind of like a flower because I want seven of my eight tubes to surround one tube so that I have one center tube and the others will surround that one center tube. And this creates kind of a flower shape for the base of this holder. After I traced the design, I had to cut the cardboard and I'm doing it with a small pair of scissors because that was the easiest I found. If you would use a knife, then it would be difficult to get smooth curves because you need to go over the cardboard multiple times for it to cut through, so a pair of scissors works way better. And the smaller the scissors, the better, trust me. If you come at a corner, don't try to bend the cardboard, end your cut and start cutting it from the opposite direction, otherwise you could bend your cardboard which is not ideal. <laughs> and because the cardboard is very thick, it's difficult to cut. So I worked in very small sections and cut the cardboard piece by piece. And when I 
finally had the shape that I wanted, I went over the edge of the base with some sandpaper to get rid of the little bits I got from the cutting. I'm done with cutting the base and now it's time to prime all the cardboard with some gesso, but I only have clear gesso, so transparent gesso. So I'm gonna try something for the very first time, which is use acrylic paint with it and mix it up together so that I get an already white base and I don't have to add it on later and I'm hoping it will work. So yeah, let's get started. Mixing the gesso with the acrylic paint worked great. I just mixed even parts acrylic and gesso together and painted all the cardboard pieces with an old flat brush. I'm not using a fancy brush because for this there is a chance that not all the gesso will come out while cleaning your brush. So you should have a specific gesso brush, which in my case is this old one. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with all the footage of me just painting a white layer onto the cardboard pieces because there are more exciting parts to this. So let's skip this and go to the next part. So I finished painting every single thing with first a layer of gesso mixed in with white acrylics and then a white layer of just acrylic. And some of these I've painted a little bit more white than the others because the white will show through but the others won't, they have, will have different colors on top. But this will be the middle piece and I first wanted to glue it immediately but I thought it would be better to paint this, the final color, first before gluing so that it will be easier to paint. So I'm gonna paint this in a light blue color. As you probably can see, I mixed up way too much paint. So after I was done painting this tube, I took an extra container I had and put the paint in there so that I could use it later for some other project. So don't worry, no paint was wasted. I finished painting the middle piece and it's time for the glue up. So I'm gonna be using this glue, which is an all-purpose glue and it works on cardboard. I've made a little test piece beforehand, so I know that this will stick. And I'm first gonna glue this one in and then place all around once. So let's get started on this glue up. I made pencil marks on my base plate for where I wanted to place my middle piece. That way I knew exactly where to position it. Also, beforehand I had turned all the tubes upside down so that the side that needed to be glued was upwards so that I didn't accidentally glue down the wrong side. Which is something I see myself doing, so better be safe than sorry. <laughs> I just went tube by tube, making sure that every piece was placed correctly. Besides gluing just the underside, I also put glue on some of the sides of the tubes so that they are more connected together. If they are just glued at the bottom, the holder would be less sturdy and if you would pick it up, there's more chance of it breaking off, which is something we do not want. So I've let the tubes dry overnight and they are now completely dried and I'm really happy with it because it's completely solid. I can hold the holder on every single tube that I want, which is amazing. I'm not gonna do it when I'm using it, just to be safe. But I think I've done something wrong, like the order of the steps. So my thought was originally to paint this one first and then glue all them up like I did now, and then paint it. But I've realized now, now that they're all together and glued up, that it would have been easier if I painted them beforehand and then glued them up because now I will have to tape a lot of tubes off because every single tube is getting a different design and the reason why I glued them before I painted, it, painted them was because I thought that well I will lose a lot of my design anyway because they won't be seen but looking at it now I should have painted it beforehand, so um, <laughs> this is gonna take way longer than it should. <laughs> but yeah, let's get started with painting them. 
For me, this is the most exciting part of this entire project. Obviously, you can paint this any color you like or even leave it white if you want, but I wanted lots of colors. A while ago, I painted cardboard letters that spell out my name, and I really liked the design of those that I did on those, so I decided to copy those onto my brush holder. First, I'm going to paint the three tubes who will get a gradient, starting with this green to blue with a hint of green gradient. I'm using acrylic paint for all of the colors, and originally, I was going for light colors and a very pastel-like color scheme, but while painting this, I learned that acrylic paint dries darker than when it's still wet. So it came out not very pastel, which I don't really mind, I liked how it looks. For the next one, I used cadmium yellow and cadmium red straight from the tube for the gradient. I wanted one tube where I didn't have to mix up my own colors, and these colors reminded me of a sunset, so I liked using them. One thing I do want to mention is that I'm fairly new to acrylics, and my gradients aren't that good yet. I wanted very small gradients and I did them the best way that I could and in the end I'm really happy with them and that's what's important. For the last gradient I wanted to do more colors so I made a three colored gradient. I went from this pinky purpley kind of color to purple to very dark blue. I tried mixing up my own pink and purple and they didn't turn out exactly the way I imagined them. I originally wanted more vibrant colors, so if anyone has any suggestions on how I should mix that correctly, please let me know and leave those comments in the comments down below. But I think that these colors ended up working well together. So here is how this one turned out. Now I'm moving on to the four tubes, which are more complicated. And I did the most complicated part of them off screen. And the part that's complicated is taping off the tubes with some masking tape. I'm so sorry for that. It was just easier to do that part off screen. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Each of the four tubes will be getting their own three colors. And for the first one, I started off with the tallest tube. And I used some turquoise blue, blue violet, and for the third color, I mixed equal parts turquoise blue and phthalo green. I don't know how you say that word. <laughs> phthalo? Phthalo green? I don't know. <laughs> After I finished the first tube though, I didn't really like how dark the purple turned out, so I painted over it with some ultramarine violet and really liked how that looked. And after the painting is done, the most satisfying part of painting these comes, which is peeling off the tape. Some paint did get under the tape, so I'll clean it up later with some white paint and a fine brush. For the second tube, I mixed again a lot of turquoise blue, but this time a little bit of phthalo green, I still don't know how to say it but this time I added white to it to get a very light shade. I used magenta and cadmium yellow for the other colors, but I didn't like how transparent the magenta was and how dark it became, so I added some white to the magenta and got a more opaque color, which I really, really liked. And here I am taking the tape off again. Oh, this stays satisfying. The third tube first color was ultramarine violet mixed with some white. And this time I didn't plan where the colors would go ahead of time, so I was adjusting pieces of tape wherever necessary so that one color wouldn't be next to themselves too often. For the other colors, I used the same kind of blue as the middle tube, but I added white to it. And I used cadmium yellow with a tiny, tiny bit of cadmium red, so that I would get a slight orange color. Thank you. 
there are again some areas that will need to be cleaned up later after removing the tape, but here is how the third one turned out. Now onto the last tube. For this one, I took a picture of it beforehand and so that way I could plan where each color would go on my phone. This one had the most areas, so I wanted to make sure that the colors would be spaced correctly. I used magenta mixed with white for the first color. The second color consists again of the same violet as before, but with a lot more white added to it. And the third color is again that one green I can't pronounce, with also white added. Oh, and by the way, every single time I've used white in this project, I was using titanium white and not zinc white. I don't really know why you would use zinc white. If anyone could explain that, that would be awesome. <laughs> and now I can finally remove the tape for the very last time for this project. Yay! And after a couple coats of varnish, the paintbrush holder is finally done. So this is how it turned out and I am super, super happy with it. I really, really love it. Despite not knowing what it would look like in the beginning, like the base and how I would put it together, I am really happy with how this turned out. I love the colors. And I just, I love the look of it and I'm really happy with my paintbrush holder. So if you decide to also make this like any form of it or just a paintbrush holder also out of poster tubes, please let me know somewhere on social media. Link me, tag me, leave it in the comments. I would really love to see it. Somebody did it when she recreated my marker case and I loved seeing hers. So please let me know if you also make a paintbrush holder. I would love to see your creations. My social media will be linked down below, so my Twitter, Instagram and TikTok are all down in the description for if you want to check it out. I would really appreciate it. But that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked watching it. If you liked this video, please consider giving a like and please consider subscribing to me. I would really, really appreciate it. But that's all for now. So thank you so much for watching and I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye! And I'm gonna make it out of some